Hey guys. Well, I see the collapse of global industrial civilization has been thwarted here in the tiny house at Bugs in a Jar Farm here on this gorgeous spring night. It is a Monday, May 15th, 2023. So, uh, as some of you may know, I just had a little bit of an issue with my camera where it fell out of the chair and landed on the carpet and completely crashed. So I was literally in the process of throwing this camera in the garbage and I threw it across the room and smashed it into the wall into the wooden wall and right before tossing it in the garbage and sending it to the landfill I decided well I guess we ought to turn it on one more time and I think it appears to be working I mean uh, so if you ever want to fix a camera and get back on track with the global industrial civilization I suggest slamming your camera against a wall so but now of course I think the battery <coughs> is going dead anyway, so while the battery dies, I'm going to sit here and try to have a rant that I cannot believe. I don't think I've ever really had this rant about the bullshit notion of our public lands and this hilarious oxymoron called wise use, wise use of our public lands, which was one of the great bright green lies of the 20th century and still remains a major bright green corporate greenwashing lie about how we have handed over millions and millions of acres of our uh, public lands to these goddamn welfare ranchers and miners and oil drillers and uh, as we get ready, as Joe Biden gets ready to uh, just completely throw our, what's left of our public lands down the toilet as we head into the, uh, what is it, the energy revolution uh, about some little uh, bullshit bone he's throwing to the little lefty greeny lap dogs. Are you a little lefty greeny lap dog eating Joe Biden's bone? I wish you would eat Joe Biden's bone. Uh, anyway, but before we get into this, like I'm going to do for every rant I have now, we're going to hear what the Dalai Lama has to say about overpopulation. Anybody n not understanding that the giveaway of our public lands is a direct result of overpopulation. We would not be giving away our public lands to a bunch of planet-eating uh, corporate uh, welfare whores uh, if there were, I don't know, 500 million people on the planet. Would not be happening. It would not be an issue. So what does the Dalai Lama have to say about giving away our public lands to corporate whores? Well, I mean, Joe Biden is the corporate, corporate whore, but you know what I mean. All right, take it away. Dalai Lama one of the great challenges today is the population explosion. Unless we are able to tackle this issue effectively, we will be confronted with the problem of the natural resources being inadequate for all the future human beings on this earth. The growth in population is very much bound up with poverty, and in turn, poverty plunders the earth. Well, poverty, uh, you know, he's talking about planet nibblers plundering the earth. 
poverty plunders the earth just as much as wealth plunders the earth. It doesn't matter. Humans plunder the earth. I have to explain this to the Dalai Lama. Poor people plunder the earth because they're planet nibblers. Rich people, including you and me, plunder the earth because we are planet eaters. When human groups are dying of hunger, they eat everything. Grass, insects, you know, like the UN wants us to eat, everything. They cut down the trees. They leave the land dry and bare. All other concerns vanish when people are hungry. That's why in the next 30 years, and I don't know the year of this quote, that's why in the next 30 years the problems we call environmental will be the hardest that humanity has to face. Thank you, Dalai Lama, for uh, prefacing this article. Uh, so anyway, guys, uh, I, I'm just going to read this latest horse shit about uh, Joe Biden throwing a bone to the little lefty greenies who are actually, actually cheering this unadulterated horse shit on. Biden plan would open leases to conservation, not just drilling and grazing. Mm. The Biden administration wants to put conserving vast government-owned lands on equal footing with oil drilling, livestock grazing, and other interests, according to a top administration official who defended the idea against criticism that it could sideline industry. So this, of course, that they'll be talking mostly about the BLM, as, which is not Black Lives Matter, uh, the other BLM, you know, what Edward Abbey called the Bureau of Livestock and Mining, uh, it is the worst offender of this, but the U.S. Forest Service is right in bed with uh, the Bureau of Livestock and Mining, uh, and talking about our public lands. Yes. Uh, that, that, yeah, yeah, actually letting the American public have access to their own public lands, you know, like to go camping and fishing and whatnot, and hiking and, and, and thinking and ju just, just uh, sleeping better at night, thinking that all of these little green areas all over the, the it's not just this country, all over the planet, but because some goddamn politician has drawn a little line and, and painted the map, that this uh, this light green, this is the light green lies of our public lands. The very notion of public lands, uh, it, 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 it's a goddamn joke. It's private lands. It, it's selling off our uh, natural heritage to the highest bidder. It, it is uh, what the, the, this whole term wise use, which I'll get to if the camera battery doesn't, this unadulterated horseshit uh, concept of wise use of our public lands, meaning selling it 
uh, for a fraction of, of, of what these goddamn planet eaters uh, have to pay to rape and pillage uh, private lands. Uh, wh what's the difference? It, it, it is a slap in the face to American taxpayers. More importantly, it is a slap in the face to this planet, every uh, earthling we share our public lands with. The, 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 the very concept of public lands is, is as big of a joke as protected areas, which in anybody who thinks uh, that public lands are protected areas, uh, and, and I was in graduate school before uh, this clueless moron had explain had it explained to him. Anyway, so what is this little uh, limp dick lefty, uh, save the president, Joe Biden, uh, throwing out there to these little greenies, acting like he's saving the planet by by doing something uh, that that should have been done since day one. Biden's proposal would allow, would allow conservationists and others to lease federally owned land to restore it, much the way oil companies buy leases to drill and ranchers pay to graze cattle. Companies would also buy conservation leases such as oil drillers who want to offset their damage to our public lands by restoring acreage elsewhere. Is, is there one person on this planet thinking for one minute that an oil company is going to restore one acre of land anywhere on this planet? planet. Oil companies have the singular motive to destroy every acre of land they hit, and after you see a picture of a lithium mine or a nickel mine or whatever mine that Joe Biden is going to be opening up on our public lands, uh, you can really kiss our public lands goodbye public lands, yeah, right. Tracy Stone Manning, Manning, director of the Bureau of Land Management, which is, which is actually, uh, I mean, Edward Abbey, uh, I mean, looking for irony, did not have to change the Bureau of Land Management to the Bureau of Livestock and Mining to land management. It is the Bureau of Land Destruction, Land Desecration, Land Profaning. The Bureau of Land Management has destroyed more of our public lands than, than, than probably uh, Exxon Corporation has. The very notion, Bureau of Land Management, leave our public lands alone. What did John Muir say in wilderness is the preservation of the world? Yes, so this planet-eating whatever, Tracy Stone Manning, Manning, director of the BLM, said in an interview with the AP that the proposed changes would address rising pressure from climate change and development. While the Bureau previously issued leases for conservation in limited cases, it has never had a dedicated program for it, she said, because from day one, there, it should have just been understood that our public lands are our public lands. And when you lease our public lands to some multi-billion dollar multinational corporation, uh, these welfare 
uh, drillers, welfare miners, welfare ranchers. It is no longer public lands. It, it is private lands. Do you think that you can go hiking? Well, maybe where they, uh, where they graze cattle, you can still go hiking if you don't mind, you know, slogging through uh, 100,000 acres of cow shit with, uh, with horse flies biting you in the face and, and, and all of your trout streams uh, being destroyed by these goddamn beef cattle. This is the reason I do not eat beef. <clears throat> Okay, so what did the Planet Eater uh, in chief have to say? Quote, it makes conservation an equal among the multiple uses that we manage for, Stone Manning said. There are rules around how we do solar development. Yeah, right. There are rules around how we do oil and gas. There have not been rules around how we deliver on the portions of federal law that say manage for fish and wildlife habitat. Manage for clean water. Wow! What a concept! Manage our public lands for fish and wildlife habitat. Manage them for clean water. Hmm. But more than a century after the U.S. started selling oil and gas leases, the conservation idea is stirring debate over the best use of government-owned land, primarily in the West, Opponents, including Republican lawmakers, are blasting it as a backdoor way to exclude mining, energy development, and agriculture on our public lands. The Bureau you know, of Livestock and Mining has a history of the industry-friendly policies for the 380,000 square miles, otherwise known as a million square kilometers, it oversees an area more than twice the size of California. It also regulates publicly owned underground minerals, including oil, coal, and lithium for renewable energy across more than one million square miles. Yes, publicly owned underground minerals. Well, I guess that uh, you're free to go out, walk out uh, into the BLM, and just, uh, you, you know, start drilling for oil or start your own lithium mine. I mean, if you're a U.S. taxpayer, it is a public lithium mine. Uh, those holdings put the agency at the center of arguments over how much development should be allowed. Uh, U.S. Senator John Barrasso, a Wyoming Republican who tried to block Stone Manning's Senate confirm, confirmation says the proposed rule is illegal. It is illegal. It is illegal to suggest that the Bureau of Land Management manage for fish and wildlife habitat and clean water over the for managing uh, to, you know, rubber stamping permits to oil drillers and cattle ranchers and, of course, uh, coming up, lithium miners and solar farmers and windmill rapers and all of the other stuff. Uh, earlier this month, Barrasso 
Barrasso berated Interior Secretary Deb Holland over uh, over it during an Energy and Natural Resources Committee hearing, saying she was quote giving radicals a new tool to shut out the public. Yes, giving radicals a new tool to shut out the public, which is, which is unadulterated horseshit. Uh, I would like to think that they are giving uh, anybody who wants to go hiking uh, without falling in an oil well or getting stampeded by a rogue bull. Uh, it's in no way, shape, or form. It will open uh, America's public lands to the American public. What else does this uh, asshole have to say? Quote, the secretary wants to make non-use a use. She is turning federal law on its head. Yes, Stone Manning said critics are misreading the rule and that conservation leases would not usurp existing ones. If grazing is now permitted on a parcel, it could continue and people could still hunt on the leased property or use it for recreation, she said. Um, and th th this is, uh, I I'm, I'm not even going to uh, embarrass your intelligence, but who, where did this article come from? This AP, uh, how, about, how about this? Uh, Donald Trump uh, <clears throat> tried to ramp up fossil fuel development on bureau lands, but President Joe Biden suspended new oil and gas leasing when he entered office. But Biden later reviewed, reviewed, which is another way of saying gutted, withdrew, lied out his lying sack of shit mouth, reviewed the deal to win West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin's support for last year's climate law. Biden remains under intense pressure from Manchin and many Republicans to allow more drilling. Such companies currently hold leases across some 37,500 square miles of bureau land. Yes. Um, the pending rule also would promote establishing more areas of critical environmental concern due to their historic or cultural significance or their importance for wildlife conservation. Uh, blah, blah, blah. By comparison, about 242,000 square miles of Bureau of Livestock and Mining Land are open to grazing livestock. Environmentalist, which I am not an environmentalist, they're talking about these mainstream limp dick, little greeny environmentalists have largely embraced the changes, characterizing the proposal as long overdue. Uh, Joel Webster with the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership a coalition of conservation groups and hunting and fishing organizations said the administration's plan would set up a process to ensure landscapes are considered for conservation without forcing restrictions. He cautioned, however, that administration officials must ensure a final rule does not have 
unintended consequences. Well, the rule that has been in place now for over a century, uh, I don't even know if the consequences were unintended or not. Uh, unbelievably, this battery is flashing. So anyway, I just wanted to mention, uh, I had never heard of this guy till I was in graduate school, uh, this planet-eating sack of shit by the name of Gifford, it's either Pinchot or Pincho. Uh, if you might have, so who he is is sometimes called the father of, sometimes you hear it termed multiple use or wise use of our public land. So in the very beginning, uh, when they started setting aside uh, land, you know, more than a more than a century ago, when they started setting aside public lands, the very original intention was, uh, you, you, you know, to set aside public lands. Uh, and they were just, uh, you know, putting acres into the system and divvying them up between National Park Service and U.S. Forest Service and the BLM and stuff. And uh, so it was kind of the John Muir uh, ethos going on that most people assumed, and to this day, I would say the majority of city dwellers, at least, for, you know, eastern city, city dwellers uh, would have no clue uh, about the, this horseshit multiple use and the hilarious term wise use of our public lands by selling it off uh, to this planet-eating corporations. Well, it was this... It was this scumbag named Gifford Pinchot, which uh, I love to see that the U.S. Department of the Interior calling a legacy of conservation. So who is this dude? More than 70 years after his death, Gifford Pinchot remains an extremely powerful voice in America's conservation movement, influencing presidents, departments, and even shaping the definition of conservation. Uh, and this is where, so I, I think this is the problem, is if your definition of conservation if, if you think that conservation means preservation, you are a clueless moron, just like I was for 23 years. Uh, you, you know, I was born in a, in a big eastern city, and I was just lived under this fallacy uh, that if they are our public lands, if they're a national forest, then they are protected, that it is a protected area. That is nothing to do with conservation. That is preservation. You know, think John Muir. So, you know, the famous saying uh, that you always hear from Gifford Pinchot this is Gifford Pinchot uh, telling you the definition of conservation. Quote, conservation means the wise use of the earth and its resources for the lasting good of men. Close quote. I'm assuming he was thinking humans and he wasn't saying it's, you know, about the lasting good of women as well. But what he's talking about is the highest and best use of millions and millions and millions uh, of acres 
of uh, our, you, you know, the greatest resource that this country has, which is uh, our, all of the ecosystems that make up the, you know, this once beautiful country of ours, and it's all about the humans. It has nothing to do with every other earthling humans share our public lands with. It is all about the humans, especially the men. Uh, there you go. It, it has a, is wise use, the word wise. Uh, so if it's good for humans, uh, you know, to have oil, or in the soon to be case, lithium, that is what we should be doing with our public lands. Uh, if it's good for humans, that's a wise use. But of course, whatever is good for humans is bad for every other species of earthling we share the planet with. Uh, Gifford Pinchot established the modern definition of conservation as a wise use approach to public land, you know, by selling it off to planet-eating corporations and stuffing their shareholders, their private corporate shareholders' pockets uh, with cash while the American taxpayer is watching his public lands be logged, be fracked, be drilled, uh, be poisoned, be covered with solar panels and windmills. This is what the American taxpayer is getting out of the deal while these rich corporations are laughing all the way to the bank. We're being fucked! Do you get it? Can't you see? Can't you see? Uh, conservationists believe in using land sustainably to preserve it for future generations rather than allowing it to be exploited and lost forever. There you go. Yes. Rather than allowing, so the best way to keep our public lands for being exploited and lost forever is to sell them uh, to oil drillers and lithium miners and welfare cattle ranchers. Pinchot's conservation theory has often been conflated with John Muir's idea of preservation. Muir believed that human actions could harm our nation's landscapes and therefore should be avoided sharply restricting access to these lands, and I refuse to believe for one minute that John Muir, you know, sticking the, the crusty piece of bread in his back pocket and hiking out into the Yosemite wilderness, talking about sharply restricting access to these lands. He wasn't talking about recreational users. He was a big proponent of uh, recreational uses. He was talking about do not sell off uh, our national treasures to these corporate whores. Uh, you know, this was, uh, you know, this was a big battle. I'm, I'm pretty sure that John Muir and Gifford Pinchot were probably contemporaries. And, uh, I, I, again, this is this kind of, I'm just guessing that probably in the early 1900s, and, and I'm, and I've done no research for this, I'm just guessing 
that, uh, that there was some sort of debate uh, early in the game about how we should proceed uh, with all of these um, acres of our public lands and obviously the preservationists being led by uh, John Muir and his gang lost. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. Gifford Pinchot and his, uh, you know, his oil drilling buddies won the war. The good guys lost. Uh, anyway, Today, Pinchot's philosophy of multiple use continues to influence the mission, the mission of federal agencies like the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of Interior's Bureau of Livestock and Mining to this day. And, uh, anyway, so, uh, he, he, here we are, and you hear John Muir turning over in his grave and, and puking with his shit. I, I can't even believe we're having this conversation. This is one more reason we're doomed. So I highly... I uh, suggest you get out there and enjoy your public lands while you still can before there's a goddamn lithium mine setting up in your favorite little, uh, what do they call it, forest bathing spot. But I gotta wrap this up because I'm not even sure my camera's still on. See if my camera actually is working again after its little oops earlier tonight. Bye, guys. Okay, it says it is recording.